Right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a new week. Uh, hope you had a good weekend. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. So just leave it open. Any one of us can please lead. We'll get into our class. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for this morning. We pray, oh God, that you would bless us with your word. Today, oh God, you speak to us. And help us to know the desires of your heart um, and help us to focus on our lives and work it better, Lord. We thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So last class, we've been talking about work-life balance and how important it is to uh, you know, balance work, family, and rest. Right? So maintaining that rhythm of work, worship, work, and rest. Then we looked at um, knowing what is important. Many things will crowd our lives at the same time, but know what is important to you. Understand, uh, OK, this is important, so I'll give this time. Uh, have a value scale uh, for your own. Uh, you, know, you may have your own standards, your own way of valuing things. Uh, and knowing, OK, is this important or not? But you have a value scale. Uh, guard your time and resources, right? your, your time, energy, and money. Guard it. Right? We talked about how there can be energy leaks, right? things that can come into our life that can really cause us to you know, lose all our strength and our energy. So guard yourself against those things. Uh, keep short accounts, uh, checks and balances, meaning uh, you can you can probably do a weekly or a bi-weekly monthly uh but shorter checks of course we have a bigger plan which could be a one year two year plan but short accounts right so uh, something that i do is uh, before i start the monday i sit down just write down the things that i have to get done in the coming week so i i mentally prepared with these five points uh, and then when friday comes we just go back and check, okay, have they been done? If they haven't been done, what is the reason? And then I can, you know, help me, helps me to work better, right? Uh, and then develop personal skills, personal efficiency, productivity, time saving skills. So, uh, with all that is available, use technology, you know, short deadlines, learn to delegate responsibilities. We talked about that as leaders. Uh, we must learn to delegate, uh, raise up other. Uh, volunteers and teams to help you in what you're doing. Organize, uh, work in an organized way. For example, you have, you know, you're going to be working with, you know, people. You're going to be working with uh, Excel sheets, Word documents. Organize them in a the right way. You know, you're going to prepare for sermons, prepare for notes. Organize them in the right way, right? And we stop there. Let's continue. We have a few more points in this chapter. And after that, we'll get into chapter 20, which is saving, investing, and uh, retirement and beyond. Right? So rejuvenate yourself. Isaiah 40, 28 and 31. I love the message translation. It's very beautifully put. It says, don't you know anything? Haven't you been listening? God doesn't come and go. God lasts. He's creator of all. And you can see or imagine he doesn't get tired out doesn't pause to catch his breath, and he knows everything inside out. He energizes those who get tired, gives fresh strength to dropouts. For even young people tire and drop out. Young folk in their prime stumble and fall, but those who wait upon God get fresh strength. They spread their wings and soar like eagles. They run and don't get tired. They walk and don't lag behind. And the message translation adds its own color, and it's so beautiful. Uh, he energizes those who are tired and gives strength to dropouts. Uh, even in our prime, we may feel tired. We will feel weary. We will fall down at times. Our physical, emotional, spiritual strength must be renewed every day. Right? Renew yourself. Exercise. With, with physical body, try to exercise, eat healthy, rest. Rest is not just, you know, you're lying down on your bed. That can be physical rest, but rest in the mind as well, very important. Uh, things that you can do to bring rest, you know, uh, 
Uh, it could be just listening to music, playing an instrument, uh, swimming, going for a run. Uh, you know, there are some some youth you know, that come and you know they talk to me and they say, "Oh, I," you know, they say, uh, "I feel relaxed when I go to the gym." It's like, wow, you know, for them the mind is relaxing because even though they're physically straining themselves, you know, this exercise. They're lifting weights and doing all of it. For them, the mind is relaxing. That's so wonderful, right? Uh, so different, all of us are wired differently. So find out what keeps you refreshed. What is it that can energize you? What, can, what is it that can refresh you? Right? And keep doing it. Right? Time out with God is so important uh, to keeping you know everything in balance. Uh, you know, this holds everything together. Right, uh, time out with God. Uh, it's our ministry, our work, our personal life, our family life, work life balance. Everything is out of this time out with God. Right, it, it is God that holds everything together. Right, so we cannot say God, uh, you know, I'm busy with ministry. I'm busy with family. I'm busy traveling here and there. Uh, I'll get back to you later. No, it should be an overflow of saying, God, all that I am doing is centered around you. Uh, and uh, Isaiah 30 verse 15 says, your strength will come from settling down in complete dependence on me. Right? When we try to do things on our own strength, most likely we will fail. Most likely we will fail. Uh, but when we trust in God, when we keep going to God and regenerating yourself, that's wonderful. Right? Um, and I always say this to young people. Of course, many of them are working, and uh, you know they ask me, you know, how do you do this? How do you do that? And I always say, you know, put aside, take things, put it aside, your work, your things. Uh, you know, your, the deadlines, all of that is there. Just put it aside. Spend time in God's presence. Right? And and something that I do is, you know, over time, personally, and, I, you know, you can, you know, if you'd like to, you can try it. You may have different ways. You can do it your way. Uh, but what, what I like to do is take a leave on a Friday. Right? So if I take a leave on a Friday, I spend the whole of Friday, the whole of Saturday, just... It's going into God's Word, reading His Word, meditating on His Word, praying, seeking His place. No, no talking about, you know, oh, what do we do with this church member? What do we do with this ministry? And, oh, you know, there are so many things. Nothing. I would go and open the laptop. Just in His Word. Uh, just hearing from God. Spending time, uh, uh, you know, just growing. Next one is stop demonic destructions and delays. A, John 10.10, 10, a thief is only there to steal and kill and destroy. I came so they can have real and eternal life, more and better life than they ever dreamed of. This is a very common verse. Uh, come, uh, come that they may, a thief comes to kill, steal and destroy, but I've come to give uh, abundant life. And um, now, it's not our intention to think of everything as spiritual delays, right? You, you, for example, if you know if there's a traffic jam or if there's some problem, you know, uh, if, if something doesn't work or the alarm doesn't work, it's not it's not the devil. Right? Many many times, you know, sometimes like I keep the alarm early in the morning, right? very early in the morning. Sometimes we're very tired from work and then the previous day and then we sleep and many times I miss the alarm. Woken up uh, you know, way after sunrise. And I'll be like, what happened? The alarm was on. Yeah, but it's not it's not it's not the it's not the enemy saying, Oh, I don't want you to spend time in prayer. That's not what it is. It's just that you were physically very tired and you had a good rest. So it's all right. Right? But then the enemy can bring destructions in our life in different ways. So if a task or a work that you're doing takes half an hour, 
you're with it for past two days or okay not two days at least five hours six hours what takes half an hour suddenly you see that hey this is a distraction this there's, there's something that is wrong there's something that's not happening now it could be our own mind oh i'll do it later i'll think about it should i add this and uh, it can just cause disruptions and delays right now when we know this sometimes the holy spirit will remind us hey this is this is a disruption this is the work this is the enemy trying to intrude stay alert take action if you sense it's a demonic uh, hand or it's a demonic uh, work that is trying to stop immediately stop pray rebuke take authority and get the work done right uh, there are times you need to stand bold and tell the storms that come in our life to cease because that's the point is we want to reach our destination we want to do what we are called to do right uh, uh, ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1 about plan ahead right to everything there is a season a time for every purpose under heaven right now planning ahead I, I know we've talked so much about it and uh, a lot of examples from the bible as well when you plan ahead you are deciding ahead of time the when the where the how and it could be you know resources it could be uh, your your schedules your your task uh, uh, you can mark out your slots in the calendar now here are three ways here right develop a daily plan develop a weekly plan a monthly plan and an annual plan now you can choose how you want to do it right now something that helps me is uh, a daily plan I uh, it, that's something that I don't normally do right daily plan but what helps me is a weekly plan like I just mentioned right so Monday to Friday I put down tasks and I say okay these tasks should be done Monday to Friday so this is something that has helped me right um, and then so I know okay Monday I'll do this Thursday I'll do this and Wednesday I can finish these tasks um, and that has helped me right? uh, but I also like to plan for the entire month you know for example how many events or how many programs or conferences uh, that we'd like to have right or, or how many how are we going to uh, finish this month or what is the uh, important thing that I want to learn in this month or the things that I need to get done in this month I do that as well and of course uh, definitely the annual plan but if you really like to plan you can also go ahead so you can do a three-year plan you can do a five-year plan uh, now it's it's nice to do it because you know as as we do it we are we're being uh, you know it's like we're telling god god i'm i'm taking my life seriously it's not like i'm just you know letting every day pass okay whatever happens let it happen i'm taking my life seriously like, uh, this is what i want to do god this is my plan uh, of course the bible says you know trust in the lord uh, with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. Yes, uh, but God has also told us, given us this life to plan ahead to. He wants us. He says, hey, I have plans to prosper you, to give you a good hope and a good future. So when we plan and give it to God's hand, uh, we're allowing God to work in our midst, right? Uh, so do it. If you haven't started, you can start small. You can, you can probably have a book write them down or you want to just you know document it uh, on your laptop or your phone do it now we have so much right we have the phone you can just pull it up and you, know, you can just read whatever you want to read and uh, but even as you make these plans there will be divine interruptions meaning uh, you know God may suddenly change things you may have to move to a different organization move to a different city uh, or or change a complete plan become an entrepreneur or or you know as a family he may ask you to you know just uh, do completely something different and you know it's God be open to those things right uh, but accommodate accommodate those changes 
and adapt to what needs to be done during those times. But I always say this, uh, you know, to uh, young people when I get to talk to them. I said, um, failing to plan is planning to fail. Uh, we have to plan ahead, right? If we don't plan, that means we are planning ahead to fail itself. Right? Uh, we have to plan, whatever it is. You know, planning is essential, right? And when it comes to ministry and business and family, we have to plan. That's where the term family planning comes, right? Uh, it, it is a plan. You need to plan ahead. Right? And God is pleased with those plans. Even as he takes you through seasons, uh, you know, recently uh, I got to meet a couple church, some, a couple of our church folks, and uh, one of them just had a baby, it's two months old. And I was looking at that baby, and I just went back, you know. The Lord just reminded me. He said, remember when your kids were little, just two, three months old, and you had no idea what to do with the child? Uh, and I, I went back, and I said, God, thank you for your faithfulness. Now my children are grown up. But when, when I saw these, you know, these parents carrying this little small baby, I thought to myself, God has been so faithful over the years, and he has, you know, this taught us. Uh, you know, so it's so wonderful to, that God takes us through these seasons. But over those seasons, we plan, plan well, right? Next one, take a family-friendly approach to business. I we'll, uh, see, we'll just skip this. Uh, it's all about work from home. Be flexible timings, open house, company visits, leaves, maternity leaves, and all of that. So uh, we'll we'll move to the next chapter, right? Chapter twenty: saving, investing, retiring, and beyond. I'd right? like so. What we were talking about: life is lived in seasons. And so you can be first you when you get into college, you know, youth, college, uh, uh, you know, you get into the workplace. Then you work, and then you grow up the ladder. Then, as as the sun rises, the sun will set as well, right? So, there will be times uh, that we are in our prime, um, but there will be times we will have to retire. None of us can work for the rest of our lives. Uh, um, we are taught to have faith or trust in God, but we are also taught. Good stewards and take responsibility of what God is. Right? Uh, I like that. You know, spiritually, spiritual minded, but earthly wise. Right? We believe we, we must have the right balance. Right? Oh, you know, people say, hey, "What are you thinking about retirement and investing?" You know, you know people who don't have faith do that. Uh, that's, that's not right. Uh, look at the scriptures. We see that the Lord Jesus taught us uh, to, you know, save, to invest, and He taught us to plan ahead. So, uh, so let's see what the scripture talks to us about saving, investing, uh, retiring, and beyond. Save to prepare for the future. Proverbs six, six to eight. You lazy fool! Look at an ant. Watch it closely. Let it teach you a thing or two. Nobody has to tell it what to do. All summer it stores up food. At harvest it stockpiles provisions. Now we've talked about the ant, right? Uh, all through summer they're working hard. And in winter, you won't see an ant around during the rainy seasons, right? Because they've all prepared themselves during the summer. Right? Uh, look at Joseph. God gave Genesis 41. God gave Joseph such a wisdom, right? He says, okay, not only did he interpret the dream, he came up with a solution for the dream. Okay, seven years is going to be harvest. Seven years is plenty. What do we do? Okay, here's what you do. Pharaoh, you take the seven years, have somebody in charge to store up all the additional, right? And then the next seven years, you will have enough. Now, where did this wisdom come from? From God. God didn't say, okay, seven years, plenty, eat and rest and enjoy. Don't worry about the next seven years. So think about it. God has thought about it for the next seven years. And there are places where God is, you know, thinking about 100 years ahead. 
right? So it is good to prepare for the future. Joseph was a man of God. He was under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The wisdom came from God. And God himself said, these seven years, you save up for the next seven years. You know, especially now, when we talk about saving it, uh, the most common thing that comes is, hey, Jesus is going to come anytime. And that's what he said 2,000 years ago is that, yes, there are prophecies that are being fulfilled, uh, lightning speed, meaning the rapture can happen anytime. But we don't want to be unprepared. Imagine, you know, I think it was early 2000, if I'm not good. 2000, yeah, early 2000, there was this group of people, uh, believers, who suddenly said, okay, year 2000 is when uh, you know, the Lord Jesus is going to come back again. They sold their businesses, sold their homes, sold everything. They were sitting and praying the whole day, waiting on the Lord. 2000 came and went, nothing happened. Now, 20 years is over. 22 years, nothing's happened yet, right? So times and seasons are in God's hands. What is our responsibility? God is telling us, prepare for the future. So we must prepare for the future. Now, what happens as we're preparing, that is not in our hands. If the rapture comes, we're gone, good. But at least we've been good stewards of what God has given us, right? It is while while we stay aligned to the scripture concerning money and wealth, it is important to know that financially we must prepare for the years when we are unable to work and earn. And we start doing it now. We start doing it now, right? So, if, or, you know, I remember as a as a student, I I used to uh, listen to a lot of these sermons and. I came across one sermon where it talked about you know, talking about future planning. It really struck struck my heart. Right, I said, "Yes, I have to prepare now." Probably I was 22 years old. Or uh, I said, "Okay, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to prepare. I'm going to." You know, I, I it's not like I thought of, "Okay, I'm going to get married, have children, anything of all that." But I just said, "I want to be well established in my future, so I'm going to work really hard." And uh, you know, just invest in certain things so that when I grow older, it will help me. And then, you know, I worked really hard, joined the Bible college, and I knew, okay, income's not coming in. Uh, so I, I took a year before that to really work and invest in and to save up. So the entire term of my Bible college, uh, I had enough funds to help me going to pay my fees, everything. I did not depend my parents at all, right? I said, no, I'm going to do it myself. And after after that, I, I realized, okay, yeah, I'm going to prepare. And this is just an example, right? So it, it all started small. It's not like it started with huge things. Very small. Right? Okay, I'm going to prepare next for my uh, wedding, for my marriage, and then children, uh, and then for them. Right? So they thought about it. Began to prepare for the future. Invest to multiply what you have. Luke 19, 23. Well then, why didn't you put the money in the bank? Then I would have received it back uh, with interest when I returned. Now, Luke 19 teaches us something about the kingdom of God. God, uh, he used the story of this wealthy man who was going away uh, uh, to be made king before he left. He handed uh, some of the money to his servants, three of them. And he says, okay, here, you take these coins. And when I come back, I want to see you, you know, uh, do something with it. And when I come back, uh, make this, I hope the money has grown. Right? Now, how you make it grow, it's up to you. you put it in the bank, you can invest it in business, you can, uh, you know, give it in interest to somebody. Uh, whatever you want to do, you can do. Right? So two of them, they invested it. But one person, Went, dug a hole, put it in there, and he said, okay, my master's, uh, you know, he's, he's very strict, very stern, so I'd rather give back his, well, the money that he gave me, right? 
he came back. The other two were said, said here, Master, this is what you, uh, you gave me. You have doubled it. Take this. King, the master says, wonderful job. You know, these, these are portions for you. Second one, same thing. Third one, oh, master, I didn't do anything because you're a, you're a stern. And, uh, so here's your gold coin. Take it back. And what is this is the response that he gets. Well, then why didn't you put the money in the bank? Then I would have received it back with interest when I returned. The least you could do is you should have put it in the bank then putting it into the ground. The point here is that God's kingdom, God wants to use us, use what he has given us, and multiply the resources that has been entrusted to us. Right? So the resources that he gives us, he wants us to multiply them. It could be finances. It could be people. It could be time. It could be uh, the things that we have you know, in our uh, you know, you know, in our availability, in our, in our hands that we can use, it's going to multiply. But he wants us to multiply. So since this includes even money, it's right to consider that even financial resources, God wants us to multiply. Now, how do we invest it? That's up to us. Right? Uh, a couple of weeks back, somebody, uh, 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 a family member, uh, came up to me and said, you know, uh, uh, is it okay to invest in uh, in property in Bangalore? The answer was, yeah, it's okay. It's good. If you want to do it, if God is leading you to do, do it. Then he said, am I being you know, covetous? Like, am I being too money-minded? Uh, I said, no. There's nothing wrong. Right? You're, you're just investing. So, uh, all I told him was, you, know, you have two children. I, I know him, so I, I know that he has two children. Right? So you're investing for your children. You're, you're putting something now, you're putting some amount now, and 15 years down the line, you are, it's going to you know, multiply. Right? And you're doing it for your children, so there's nothing wrong in it. Right? Sometimes we may feel guilty, oh, Am I thinking too much about myself? No, not at all. If God has blessed you, you use it, you multiply it. There's nothing wrong in it. Right? If we don't multiply it, if we don't multiply what God has given us, then we may not be faithful servants. Right? So even as we plan ahead, multiply the resources that God has given us. Now, Plan financially, live responsibly. And when we talk about planning financially, our dependence is always from God. You know, God gives us, we give back unto God uh, a tenth of what he has blessed us with. But our primary goal in life is not acquiring wealth. Our hearts must not be set on the things of this world, but of the things of God. How do I differentiate it? This is the best way that I can think of. You know, we get a good night's sleep. We open our eyes. What is the first thing that comes to our mind? If it is the first thing that comes to my mind is, uh, when can I buy this or when can I do this? Something's wrong. I need to set my heart right. I need to get things right with God. But if the first thing that comes to my mind when I wake up is, God, I thank you for this new day, for this breath of life. The, the intentions are right. Out of that comes everything else. You know, at a very young age, I, I used to go to hospitals, ICUs. And I remember I used to go with pastors, our pastoral team. We used to go to these hospitals, pray for people on the deathbed. Every time I would go, this realization would strike. One day, right, one day, uh, we will all pass the show. Especially when we go for funerals, it's, it's very, it's heartbreaking, it's sad, right? But we also know that the person 
as legal he's about yes but we suddenly begin to think straight it's not about what we have but it's about what we can give it's about god right we make him our priority seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and he will take care of all our needs and when he gives us all of the abundance that he has uh, we use it for god's glory live it responsibly right uh, now another important thing is any abundance that god gives us it's also good to you know we don't spend it lavishly upon ourselves but we use it for the purposes of god as well right now, some of the things that we can do is donate it to poor help this uh, children uh, i'm not saying give everything that you have but give portions the more you give the more it's going to be a blessing right uh, financial planning is important uh, uh, you know when you talk about budgets something that you can do is think about the budget that you have for the month and then set aside okay this is what goes away this is what i need and this is what i will you know invest this is what i need for the month to look after my needs and it's just a budget a simple budget that you're making uh, but it's important that you do it responsibly right parents should provide for their children second corinthians 12 14. this is now the third time that i'm ready to come to visit you and i will not make any demands on you it is you i want not your money after all children should not have to provide for their parents but parents should provide for their children now uh next semester we'll be talking about first and second corinthians as well and it's a wonderful two wonderful episodes which talks about the father and the mother heart of uh, the great apostle paul and uh here he's 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 talking about uh you know he's going to go to jerusalem and he's encouraging the church he uh if you want to give you can give we go to jerusalem the church there is being persecuted they wanted to give offerings to them uh and paul is writing here he's saying it's it's not about the money you want to give you give You're giving to god but it's about your heart it's about uh you know as parents uh, we must provide for you right uh and so part of our god-given responsibility for those who are parents here um, we need to take care of our children. This would include their needs, giving them a good education, things that they so they can stand on their own feet. Now, maybe some of us here are not even married yet. Um, I remember it's a season, right? There'll become a time you get married, you'll have children. Remember these things. Begin to apply it. Begin to work on it. Right. So so that you know as you go through these seasons you'll realize okay these are things that i must do children should care for widows elderly family members plan for what you will leave behind proverbs 13 22 good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children but the wealth of the sinner sinner is stored up for the righteous part of financial planning is also what you're going to leave behind for the next generations right now you may think, oh, but I'm just a little, you know, I'm not, I'm just a student right now. I haven't started working. I, I don't even have a bank account. I, ah, it's all right. I, don't be overwhelmed. Right? Sometimes you may think, oh man, I haven't done for myself. I still have to stand on my feet, get married, have children. How am I going to think about my next generation? Don't worry about it. Right? These are just pointers. But the point that we're trying to bring across is, as you go through those seasons, and then you will begin to work eventually. Think about your children. Think about what you can leave for them. Right? It says, I like this verse. It says, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. It's wise in the eyes of the Lord. It's, it's, it's good in the eyes of God. And we do that. Now, I know... If uh, there are many of them who have said, oh, but then I don't want to give the children. They have all messed up. They've, they've done this. They've done that. And what they do with it is that's another story. But you, as a father or a mother, 
are doing a good thing in the eyes of God and be assured that our reward is in heaven. I retire and refire, add meaning to those golden years. Psalms 92, 12 to 15, the righteous will flourish like palm trees. They will grow like cedars of Lebanon. They are like trees planted in the house of the Lord that flourish in the temple of our God, that still bear fruit in old age and are always green and strong. This shows that the Lord is just, that there is no wrong in my protector. Now, very often, we, when we think of practically of retirement, uh, we think of weakness, we think of, you know, uh, death, or, oh, okay, my time is over. Not really. A retirement, it, it, it may sound, you know, like, okay, end of my life season kind of a thing, but it, it could be a start of a new season. Right? Plan ahead for those seasons. Right? There are many ways to to use those sunset years, meaning you 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 can volunteer, you can... Uh, you can, you know, volunteer in places. God has given you the good, good help. Uh, you know, you serve in communities, teach younger people, train younger people. Uh, you know, probably have sessions with people, and it's wonderful. You know, one of the things I love to ask older folks, I always ask them, whoever it is. Right? I, I don't look for people who are you know, whether they're matured. You know, ask them, how did you? About parenting, how did you do it? Uh, how did you, you know, especially when their children are growing up, they're getting into their teens, and now we have a whole set of other things to worry about, to you know, to to see, you know, the social media and all the influence of the enemy. Uh, but how did you do that? And I love to hear them, learn from them. Right now, these golden years, the years of retirement, is not the end can refire, re-energize. Uh, you know, it, it can just take you back to a place of, okay, now I have eight hours in my hand. I'm going to sit with God's word. I'm going to read God's word. I'm going to pray, ask God for uh, you know, wisdom, and divine uh, favor, and, and you know, just walk in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, for those in ministry, uh, normally there's no retirement. Right? Normally. Right, because you you know you're gonna work. It's not work, but it's something that you really like to do, and you know that you're going to be preaching all your life. So you know, even when you get into those older age, that old age, you don't have to think, "Oh, I'm getting." Of course, there are things that we can't do. That's why uh, many times I, when I talk to youth, I tell them, "What you do in your thirties, you cannot do when you're sixty years old." Some of them ask me. Why do you wake up so early? Why, why are you so, you know, so much in this thing of you know fasting, doing all these things? You don't eat well, or you don't do this. Half the time you're only uh, you know reading things and you're doing this. And, you know, you're not sleeping enough. Now, I know I, at times, but the reason is when I'm 60 years old, I cannot do it. I cannot. I don't think I can pray for three, four, three hours at a stretch when I'm 60 years old oh, I'm going to be tired right uh, you know things will change over the years things will change right now uh, if I can stand and lead example right if I can stand and lead worship for two hours when I'm 60 it's going to be hard so you do things what you can do now that when you're 60 you don't look back and say oh man I wish I did it so that's why you I always tell young people, push yourself. For God, you push yourself. Because you don't want to go back and, and when you grow old, you look back and say, wow, I wish I did it when I was young. Right? God who was, who is, and always will be, Malachi 3, 6, for I am the Lord and I do not change. It's always good to pause and reflect on the goodness of God. God who has led us throughout all these years, he, threw, he saw us through those seasons from our youth, from our workplace, from uh, he saw through the journeys, the bigger parts of life, and even at the old age, he is still God. Uh, Isaiah 46, 4, even to your old age, I am he, and even to gray hairs, I will carry you, I have made you, I will bear you. 
even I will carry you and deliver you. You know, the hardest thing in this whole thing of retirement is to, when we hand over, it, it is it is really an uh, emotional time, especially if, if it's an organization that you have uh, started with blood, sweat, and toil. Uh, and then when you're handing over leadership, or you're handing over the organization to somebody else, uh, it's a very emotional thing. But remember, God is still God. So all the seasons, you look back, you ponder, you thank God, and you, you know, just let go at times, right? All right. Any questions? Any thoughts? Uh, we have another ten minutes until we get into the next chapter, entrepreneurship. So even if we get into this, uh, we can try and complete on Wednesday, which is the next class we can complete. Uh, any questions? On saving, retirement, retiring. No questions? Okay. All right, good. Yeah, I just wanted to share, like, uh, yes. thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Paul. Uh, these truths are so incredible. Like, uh, uh, it's, it's a privilege to even uh, realize these because. Uh, days and uh, months just go by, but just to pause and uh, really think, yeah, what I can do now, I might not be able to do when I'm old. <laughs> it's okay. it's really thought provoking. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much. It's welcome. Yeah, this is, so these things have been told to me by people, you know, who are much older, and and it's obvious, right? It's obvious when you're twenty. 25 we can you know stand and kneel down for a couple of hours even an hour or and pray but when you're 60 you can't do that it, it's it's not like the zeal for god the fire for god has gone away no it's physically difficult right when i'm 30 i can eat whatever i want nothing's going to really happen uh you know your body's immune to all this you know whatever we eat yeah we get old we can't. You gotta restrict your food. You gotta restrict things. So the same way, right? So, oh, so just do as much as you can. Do it faithfully. We are young, so when we look back, say, God, thank you. Okay. The bigger says, I read somewhere that in biblical Hebrew there is no word for retirement. What's your take on it? Okay. I'm not sure about the Hebrew, uh, but. But this whole thing of retirement uh, came in. It, it's a natural term, right? It's not a, it's not a biblical term. Okay, so, you know, people re retired in the Bible. To retire simply means it's it's more of a, a, a word that is used in the army, right? So you attack, you retire, you hold back, you stay back. You don't you don't do you know you don't uh, uh, go for the fight or you don't do any action you retire now i'm not sure about the hebrew context uh but when you look at the old testament there are times when god has basically taken certain responsibilities from somebody and given it to someone else so he's not saying okay Moses, it's time to retire. Your work is done. He's not saying it, but the action shows it. Right? So Moses, you're not going to enter the promised land. From for what you did at the rivers of Kadesh, you will stand, you will see the promised land. But Joshua will take it further. Your, your, your responsibility is over. Look at Elijah and Elisha. Elijah. You've been here long enough. Now your, your your time is going to be your time is gone. Next next is Elisha. Saul, you you were the king. Of course, you did things wrong, but your time is up. There's going to David is going to come in. So if you look at God, He's always worked through seasons. Oh, uh, but you also see, like for example, Abraham. He says. He lived a long life and he was satisfied for the rest of his life. 
and his generations were blessed. And, uh, uh, if you look at uh, Jacob, the same thing. He lived a long life, his generations were blessed. And so it was the, uh, when you look at the old covenant, the word may not have been there, but the but the meaning of it or or the essence of retirement may have been there. But the word wouldn't have been there. Right? Like for example, Trinity, the word is not there, but it's there. The essence of it is there, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It's, it's there. So uh, so forgive me, but I don't know the Hebrew, you know, the exact Hebrew words and uh, uh, but maybe the essence of retirement and the essence of handing over uh, leadership that is definitely there in the old covenant. We see it also in the new covenant. We see where the Apostle Paul has raised up leaders, and he he, he says to Timothy, his last two letters to Timothy, he's giving them he's giving him instructions and saying, "This is what you have to do," and uh, you know these are things that you have to fulfill the task that you have to do and you know of course here the scenario was different paul knew that his his life is going to end uh but he was ready for it and he you know just passed on the baton to uh, timothy you know, in terms of ephesus so, yeah so it's there it's there but the word may not be there anything else Okay, all right, so we'll stop now. Uh, we have two more chapters, entrepreneurship. We'll talk a little bit about that uh, Wednesday, entrepreneurship, and uh, tw was chapter 22, workplace transformation. We'll try and finish it uh, the next class, right? All right, let's just close in prayer. Anybody would like to pray? Rosalind, would you like to pray? Anyone, anyone can close the class. Let's pray. <laughs> Wonderful Heavenly Father God, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master, for this session that we had, Lord. Lord, we learned so many things, Father God, truths, Father God, from your word. God Almighty, we pray, Father God. Sometimes, yes, Lord, we are lazy, we are we are not we are we are unfaithful we are disobedient father god but lord your love is unconditional and father god when you teach us father god it really encourages us lord so that it shows father god that you love us father god we thank you father for whatever we have been taught this morning father god in this session and lord we pray help us father god that we may not only be hearers of the word but doers of the word lord so that our lives may bring glory to your name, Lord. God, we thank you, Father God, also for our pastor. We pray, Father God, bless him. Lord, anoint him, Father God, and use him even more, Father God, for your glory. Lord, we thank you. I bring all the students, Lord. I bring all the students, Lord, Father God, and I pray, Father God, each and every one of us, Father God. Lord, let whatever we hear, Father God, we may imply it, Father God. Father, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Rosalind. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Have a wonderful week ahead. I'll see you on Wednesday. God bless.